All right, guys, welcome back to the sawmill. We're down here at the timber frame today. And I know what you're thinking. What happened to your window? Let me explain. So here's where the window was. I took it out last night. I boarded it up with some poplar. I got some roofing paper to, to work as a house wrap because I don't have any more house wraps. So I covered it with that. And I got a piece of metal to put over that. And this was the only window down here at the shop other than the small window on that door over there. But more importantly, here's the reason why this window was taken out. It leaked. Every time it rained down here and the weather comes from this side so the rain would always hit this side of the barn, rain came in on this window every time. I went through probably two things of caulk, all kinds of shims, I mean, you name it and I tried it. And there's two reasons it probably failed, or two possible reasons, rather. Number one, improper install. I've never put a window in before. I may have done it incorrectly. I don't know. That's probably what I'm leaning toward. And the other possible reason could be a failed seal in the window when I bought it or something in the window that wasn't right when it was manufactured. I'm leaning more toward my error, though. I probably didn't put it in right. Next time I build a barn and I put a window in it, I think I'll hire somebody to come out here and show me the proper way of doing it. I should have watched YouTube, actually. Those guys on YouTube know what they're doing. I should have watched those guys and uh, one of those R&R &R building guys and kind of went by what they did on their installs. And they put windows in. But that's why it's gone is the main reason is it leaked. And number two, I really didn't use it because the dust collector for the molder is on the other side of it. So you really couldn't even see out of it. So it really didn't serve a purpose being there. And it did look kind of odd having just one window on this shop down here, you know, so. And you couldn't see nothing when you looked out of it, except for this big kiln right here. So it wasn't like you was looking at a nice view of the mountains or something. So it's gone. I'm boarding it up today. Let's go grab the metal and finish this up. And I'll show you guys some other stuff I had done to the barn over the weekend. Don't go anywhere, guys. we got a lot going on today. All right, so before we grab that piece of metal, let me show you guys some work that we had done Sunday. I had some, uh, I guess you would call them uh, general contractors come over Sunday and they had a metal brake bender. So they was actually able to bend metal on site. And they covered up all my corners, all four corners of the barn right here where the truss come out on the roof were exposed. On that corner down there and on the other two, I got all those covered up. They was able to bend some metal and make that look pretty good. That way there's no wood exposed on the corners. I'm really happy about that. But the big job that they had to do was build out the soffits on the main part of the barn right here. So right here we have this A-frame and this is the first part of the building that went up. And the soffits were not completed when I built it. I left those open and that was getting to be a problem. I had birds coming in up here. I had carpenter bees trying to eat on the trusses. It just made a mess. So they went up there and boxed that in and got some vinyl soffit and it looks pretty much like a house. It looks really good. It's vented, the soffit has small holes so air can come in through the attic and circulate right there in the barn. But that's the big job that they had to do was those soffits. And they did it on both sides. If I can come in here just a little bit and show you guys. They built that complete white box right there with some poplar, wrapped it in metal and then put the vinyl soffit underneath it. Looks really good. I am really glad to have that done. And I'm one step closer to finally having the shop closed in, except for the fact that I need to finish these doors. I always pre-drill the holes and people ask me why you pre drill the holes. Two reasons. Number one, it makes install so much easier. You're not sitting up there with a bit or a, or a screw rather trying to penetrate this metal. You got a pilot hole ready. And number two, it ensures that your holes are going to be pretty close to being perfectly aligned. That's why I do it. And it doesn't take but just an extra few seconds, but it tears people up. One guy even emailed me one time about all the time that I was wasting pre-drilling the holes. I'm not getting paid by the hour. I'm pretty sure I'm not getting paid by the job. So uh, if it takes me a little bit longer, I don't mind. I think it looks better. You guys will be amazed at the emails I get from people 
Not you guys that are watching, the trolls out there that get so irritated by the way I do things, they have to send me an email three pages long explaining to me why I should do it their way. Well, this isn't Burger King, guys. You don't get it your way. It's my way. My way or the highway. Unless, I'm in put unless I am uh, putting in a window, and then it's probably the wrong way. I think I did it wrong. This metal is filthy. I'll get some water, clean this off a little bit before we install it. Looks terrible. This will help a little when it rains Friday and that rain comes flying in on this side of the building. That should clean it off even better. guys and just like that no more window you can see the seam right there on the bottom but other than that blends in just fine looks pretty good no more leaky windows now let's move on to something else I tell you what, friends, I don't always show it on camera, but this dump trailer is extremely handy here at my farm. I use this thing almost every day, every day. Made by Log Right, they do sponsor me, but I tell you what, guys, I would be telling you about it anyways because it is really handy. If you need something like this around your farm, look no further. This thing is nice. And I leave it outside year round. I've had it for over a year. Still looks brand new. Now these wood chips come out of the planer and they've gotten rained on a few times. Made some kind of hard. forgot I had two things to do with the chicken house. Number one is haul the wood chips up to the compost pile and number two is haul the chicken poop to the compost pile. It's not in the dump trailer though it's in a manual little cart but uh, I ain't got far to go with it. You guys see what I did right there? I said I got two things to do here and number two is the chicken poop. Get it number two? I'll be here all day, guys. All day. Last time I said it, people got a kick out of it. If you're going to farm and have animals, this right here is just part of it. And if you're wondering why this stuff looks so black, the reason is we use recycled coffee grounds in the chicken house. 
when you walk in there, it smells just like Starbucks. It really does, guys. When you walk in that chicken house, if you had yourself a good book and a nice chair, you might want to stay a while. It's a nice environment, actually. It's a really clean chicken house. My wife takes care of that. That's her main job here every morning is full with the chickens. And that chicken house, guys, I tell you, you could almost eat off the floor. I'll show you the coffee grounds, and I need to check for eggs anyways. All right, this time of year, we get a little bit less on our egg production than we get during the spring and summer. See here, we got two in there, two, that's four, five, six, seven, cause two of those are decoys. So seven, that's not too bad. I think we got five yesterday. So right here is the coffee grounds and the chickens roost right here at night. That's where they sleep. So naturally, the chicken poop falls down on this table and that's where you'll find the recycled coffee grounds. We get those at Royal King. That's the only place we've ever been able to find them at. I'm sure other places may have them, but they have to be dry. You can't use the wet ones that you might get from Starbucks. They have to be dry coffee grounds. If they're wet, they will get a, a mold that grows on them. It's for a really bad situation. But that's the table that the manure is collected on. A little bit of it gets on the floor. We've got wood chips down there, but not so much. Most of it does fall on the table. All right, guys, now we're gonna head down to the log yard to cut a red oak log to length. I need about one more log to finish up that order for the trailer decking. I think I need 16 more uh, two by sixes. Hopefully one more log will do it. I've got a 12 footer down here. So I got the chainsaw in the back. We'll have to cut a few inches off both ends or a, a few feet rather. And hopefully that will be the last one we need. Keyword is hope. All right, so right here, we're about, I don't know, 40 yards from the timber frame. And you can't even tell where that metal has been put on there today to cover up the window. Blends in just fine. That building looks really good right there beside the kiln. Here in the next few days though, I'm gonna to to get in there behind the timber frame and pull that cedar out. I have no idea how long those cedars are and what condition they're in, but there's about a dozen in there. Need to take them up to the mill and see what's inside of them. So this red oak log should complete that order, I hope. It's about 12 feet long. I went ahead last night and came out here and I marked my measurements. So I need to cut what we got right here saw right there right there right there i think right there i need to check that one again and that would give us uh, four blocks for firewood and an eight and a half saw log or eight and a half feet saw log Just cut i need to verify this measurement because i have been known to mess up a time or two if one of you guys will hold that measuring tape down there i'd appreciate it all right uh that's it okay
right, friends, here's what we're looking at. I need to saw 62 inch by six and a half inch, eight foot long oak trailer decking boards. I got 44 done. They're scattered everywhere up here. I got a bunch on the table. I got some right there. I got a decent amount over here. And as we saw today, the boards will come off the mill and the slabs cause the table's full and go over here. And I'll pick them up from here and load them on the trailer tomorrow if the customer shows up tomorrow. And before we start on this red oak, and hopefully this will be enough to finish up the order, I need to get 16 out of this one. We should be okay. I'm thinking I'll get about 20 or so. But before we do that, I need to edge this one down to six and a half inches on the width. And this will be number 44 right here. All right, guys, if you're wondering why it's took me several days to finish up this oak, the reason is it's kind of a secret right now, and I'll tell you guys about it here in probably, probably about three weeks. But if you're on my Patreon site, you'll know about it already. So that's a little perk of being on Patreon. You know about these surprises and stuff going on behind the scenes before people on YouTube know about it. So uh, that's my little pitch for Patreon this week. If you wanna know what's been going on here, go join Patreon and you'll find out. It's pretty exciting what's getting ready to happen here at the sawmill in the next two to three weeks. Maybe sooner, but probably three weeks, maybe two, but three at the latest. So uh, there's a link down below, you can go check it out. So this is Red Oak, guys. We should get through with this pretty fast, but we may have to change the blade. I've had that blade on there for the past couple of days and it may be getting a little bit dull on us. That's Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, call Joe. Cell phone number is in the video description. I say that because people still email me and ask me where these blades come from. Anyways, let's open this one up and see how it looks. The only large defects that I see other than the pith being off centered a little are these small little knots. There's a lot of knots on this log. They're not really big, uh, four inches, two inches. So they're not giants, but it's a low grade oak log because of that. I don't see a single clear face on this entire log. There's knots all the way around it. So that's what makes it low grade. <laughs> 